everyone today I want to show you a few ways of using these two stamps in my watercolor workbook stamp set this is how the set looks this is how you would receive it it's an a5 stamp set and you can see all the details and all the stamps the kind of overview of it in a video that I will link here and I'm doing a series of videos just to give you ideas and show you how I would use and how you can use uh, the stamps in this set. So I would say kind of the starting stamps, if you will, are the color swatch stamp, which I have here mounted on an acrylic block. It's this one here. And this one is great for keeping all of the details of your paints and their qualities if they are uh, granulating staining all that and then before we actually get to uh, really mixing colors or trying to come up with a color scheme for a painting I really like the idea of just uh, swatching the paints and kind of setting up your palette so I have here this uh, sample that I made and I showed in that uh, vi video that I was that I mentioned but I'm just going to do that process with you now so you can see how simple and easy it is. I'm going to use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. This is water resistant. You want a waterproof ink. You really don't want an ink that will be um, you know, water soluble and reactivated with your paints because it will contaminate them. And while that might be a nice effect, I think it's counterproductive when you're when you actually want to see the colors. Uh, another great option is the stays on inks. These are also water resistant. I really like the stone gray. Um, for the probably for my own use, I would use stone gray because it's it's a little less harsh. But this one is really good for the video so you can see what I'm doing and it also stamps very um, crisp. So if you have kind of a regular palette that has like half pans, then it's a very intuitive use of using the stamps. We have the half pan and the full pan and they have the same height so you can line them up. If you have a palette where you have a combination of both, so for example in my palette we have the wells that have uh, paint squeezed out of a tube. I use the wells for my kind of staple colors, um, although <laughs> that also changes, but I try to, to have those for the colors that I use the most and I always want in my palette. And then in the middle I have this insert, which is uh, like an insert in a 24 half pan palette. And you can see that I have here some full pans, some half pans. So having both these options makes this process really easy. Now, my palette is almost the size of my page. And the one thing is that this particular palette has some configurations that are not exactly the shape of a pan like these. So you can either just kind of ignore it and do this. Uh, for me, the point is that I want the wells, or at least most of them, to have the large size because those are colors that kind of play a bigger role in my palette and then uh, the other ones I'll do the the half pans. If you have a really large palette like, like I have that holds a lot of colors you might have to plan a little bit the configuration in your sketchbook especially if it's a small one but what you could do is play with you could stamp the you could stamp the pens and then uh, fussy cut them and then play around with that of course if you have a small palette then uh, you shouldn't have any <laughs> difficulties but since my palette is so large uh, even though I'm using a large sketchbook it won't fit everything if I use the 
the full pen stamp. So uh, you can just decide what you want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of one template for the wells and then uh, I'm going to move a bit and create the template for the insert of my palette, like this part, just so that I can uh, include everything. But yeah, my palette is pretty big. <laughs> so I'm using my beloved Fabriano Vergaton sketchbook and I really love the idea of starting a sketchbook with your current palette because it really allows you to kind of keep track. Uh, you can see that my stamping is not perfect. I'm okay with that. I'm not into perfection. Uh, obviously, you know, stamping in a sketchbook can be uh, a little bit tricky. So you could do just what I did here and do this on a separate piece of paper and then attach it to your sketchbook. But usually if you're starting a new sketchbook, then it should be actually nice and flat and kind of easier to stamp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to just to try and save me some space. I'll do one here for the corners of my palette. And then I'm going to add two. of the smaller ones for these areas, which happen to be uh, smaller. These two wells here and these two are smaller than all of the other ones. And now I'm going to stamp the insert part and I'm going to try and remember <laughs> that I have here a combination of full pans and half pans. So hopefully I remember to put them in the right places. And I think also this looks really nice when it's stamped more tightly. So I'm going to try and do that. You can see this doesn't exactly line up because actually the reason is that in my palette the middle row is on a different kind of 90 degrees to these ones but that's okay it doesn't matter the point is just to sample all of the colors every palette is a little bit different and every pen is a little bit different so there's no way to get everything with each palette always perfect, but that's not the purpose of this stamp. Uh, of course, if you have just a palette with uh, pans that are just organized in the designated spaces, so in this case, this palette is supposed to accommodate two rows of paints, and then the middle is supposed to be a space for a brush or something like that. I just need a lot of paint, it seems. <laughs> so I added um, another row but I I think if I I could have maybe alternated some like this and then others like this because if I just use the the tall uh, stamp it would have gone uh, out of the page so you might need to um, to try out a few things if you have a large palette With the remaining spaces, we can use some of the word 
stamps. So for example, I have the word palette. Could use that. And this paper is rough, so you have to be careful with rough paper. Uh, just by nature, your stamping might not be as perfect as it would be on smooth paper. So take that under consideration. That's another reason that I like this ink. It's very um, juicy. I don't mind imperfect stamping, but I just want to warn you that, you know, if you're using um, textured paper, you might have that. I'm going to add, I should have, <laughs> it's so like me not to think things through. I should have put the palette a bit more to the top and then swatches underneath, but um, I didn't. So we're going to do swatches, and then maybe I can add something in handwriting. And now comes the fun part. Uh, you might want to add the names of your paints right now you can do that in the swatch itself like inside or outside or you could uh, write it on the other side whatever you prefer i don't think it's especially necessary because if this is the palette that you're going to work with then you know which color goes where uh, so I don't think it's necessary to know the name, but if you do want to add the names that maybe, um, you know, leave a bit more space or try a different configuration so you can add them. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to play some music and swatch the paints. Thank you. 
And that's it. You can make this as messy or as organized as you prefer. I think it's also an opportunity to kind of show your style. And I'm very messy. <laughs> so I love adding splatters, adding drops of water, letting maybe some of the colors flow into each other. Uh, it's all up to you. You can also go back and add a little bit of shadows around um, like one edge of the pen if you want. Uh, to me, this is a perfect starter for any sketchbook. Again, I'm if I didn't mention it in this video, uh, this is very much inspired by Liz Steele, an urban uh, sketcher from Australia. She starts her sketchbooks like this and I adopted the concept um, very, very, you know, with very open arms because I, I, I just love the look of my watercolors. I don't even need to paint anything with them. Uh, swatching them is, you know, just fun. So check out the other videos showing some of the other stamps and ways to use them. There's also the kind of full reveal video, which you can see everything that comes in the set. If you're interested, please take advantage of the pre-order because I do not know when I will do a restock. So um, this is kind of it. <laughs> and not to sound too dramatic, but uh, yeah, uh, if you're interested, then uh, all the information will be linked below. Just make sure you choose the US or non-US, depending where you are in the world. These are made in the US and they will be shipped from the US. So that's why there are two uh, separate listings with the rest of the world uh, a little bit more expensive due to shipping costs. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.